objective today is to make equivalent fractions using the number line, the area model, and numbers. Let's first look at a number line, and we're going to take a look at one-half. One-half is a fraction, and it is between two whole numbers. It is in between 0 and 1. We would divide this into two equal parts in between those whole numbers, 0 and 1, so that we have this here as 1 half. We could have labeled this 0 halves and this over here as 2 halves. If we looked at this number line and continue to look at this number line, we would notice that 0 and 1, if we had divided this into 4 parts, that's one part. As you can see here, this is 1, 2, 3, and 4. Again, this is 0 and this is 1. This would be 0 fourths in this case. This would be 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, and 4 fourths. So that 1 half is also equal to 2 fourths. Similarly, if we had divided this into sixths, so this is zero and this is one still, six, so then we'd have it like this here, into six, this would be zero six, zero is still zero six, this would be one six, two six, three six, four six, five six, and six six. And still equivalent to one half, in this case would be three sixths. So one half, two fourths, and three sixths are all equivalent fractions. They all have the same value. Let's take a look at this using an area model. And then so we're looking at this fraction of one half. All right, let's take a look at the area model. And then so if we have, and we, we will also put the numbers in down below to show our work of how it is that we're approaching each of these here. And then so let's go ahead and take a look at this first box here. And this first box and with this first model here, Let's go ahead and divide it into two parts. And according to our fraction there, and our fraction again is 1 half, what we're doing here is we're actually only looking at one of those two parts, so that there is 1 half. Now, if we look at the next model here, we'll start again with 1 half as we had before. We would be looking at one of those. However, before we do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and divide um, horizontally as well. And now if you see, we actually have four parts there all together. And the equivalent for one half that we'll be looking at is we'll be looking at two of those four parts. What we did with numbers is this here, where we took the one half and we multiplied by 2 in the numerator and denominator. That's because we divided it into two more parts there. And then so 1 times 2 is 2, and 2 times 2 is 4. Yes, there's four parts there all together, and we're only looking at two of those. So 2 fourths does equal 1 half. What we'll do in the third box over here, in the third model, is we'll start with 1 half again, but this time, let's go ahead and partition now into thirds vertically so that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. We'll have 6 parts all together. So what we just did there, instead of looking at 1 half, we're actually looking at times 3 and times 3. There's now 6 equal parts all together 
and we are looking at three of those six parts. And then so if I shade those in, we got one, two, and three. So three six, two fourths, one half, those are all equivalent fractions. Doing that same thing with the last box there, we again have one half, but this time, instead of fourths, we're gonna go ahead and put it into eights. And if we look at that, we would be looking at four of those eight parts to be equivalent to uh, um, one half. And then so what we did there is we went one times four in the numerator and two times four in the denominator to be able to get four eighths. All of these fractions here, one half, two fourths, three sixths, four eighths are equivalent fractions. Here we're asked to make fractions equivalent to one third and so we'll start with the number line, and we know that one-third is less than one, so we'll use zero and one as our whole numbers, and it's the denominator that's telling us that we're going to be dividing this into three parts in between each of those whole numbers. So in between zero and one, we have to divide it into three equal parts. And then so as you see here, we have one, two, and three equal parts. Labeling our number line, zero is also equal to zero-thirds. Here is one-third, here is two-thirds, and here is three-thirds, which would also equal one. Now, continuing with our number line approach, instead of thirds here, let's take a look here. Remember, we, we multiply by in the same in the numerator and denominator, so we'd have one-third times two times two, which would equal two-sixths is one way to look at it. So we'd be looking at six instead of thirds. Let's look and see how it is that that would look. That means that that would be zero six here. That would be six six here. And right in the middle would be three six. And then so in between here, 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 and here is one six, two six, four six, and five six. And as you see here, a little bit off in the way that I drew it. However, it would be one-third and two-sixths would go together, and two-thirds and four-sixths would go together as well. So that one-third does equal two-sixths. That is a fraction that's equivalent to there. Um, one of the easier ways to do it is just to use those numbers. Here's one-third, and if we multiply by three, for instance we would end up getting three-ninths. And so three-ninths is an equivalent fraction to one-third. Let's use an area model to take a look at one-third as well. And then so here's one-third where we have our model here. We would divide it into three parts and we're looking at one of those parts. Now an equivalent for that then, if we make that same thing there where it is we would be looking at one of those parts except now instead let's go ahead and divide that horizontally one more time all right so this was one third here and now we're talking about six and the equivalent for one third then would be two of those two six let's draw another one here again that's those, those parts there and instead, let's go ahead and go, da, 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 da. that's one, two, four there. So we got one, two, three, and four. And so it looks like it's four, and then the denominator would be, um, let's see, 12. Four twelfths does equal one third. And then so if we looked at those numbers again, here's one times four, and um, 3 times 4 does equal 4 twelfths. What we did there again is we started again with exactly the same vertical lines that we did for thirds, except this time I drew three more lines horizontally so that it was divided into four parts there along with the three parts from before, or 12 parts altogether. You see that we have those 12 different, um, equal parts. 
So there's different approaches for us to be able to find equivalent fractions.